Okay, we got the cleansing wave, the biblical truth of our hymns. Our number 67, Phoebe Warren Palmer. Let's get some reading done here. Was a Methodist evangelist and who promoted the doctrine of Christian perfection. She's also considered the founder or one of the founders of the holiness movement in the Methodist church. And we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, the, her and her husband regularly attended the Allen Street Methodist Church in New York City. They were interested in, in the writings of John Wesley, who started. And a particular interest that they had was in Wesley's doctrine of Christian perfection, which is a belief that Christians can be saved a life free of sin. And she experienced what John Wesley termed as eternal sanctification. So... We're looking at where the source of these hymns are, who's the source of them, and the biblical truth. Now, holiness believed the second work of grace, or a second place blessing, referred to as personal experience subsequent to regeneration, commonly called salvation, in which the believer is cleansed from the tendency to commit sin. And the experience of entire sanctification known to the Methodists or perfect per perfectionism known by the Quakers enables the believer to live a holy life and ideally live entirely without willful sin. Uh, the holiness message who made the bulk of the holiness movement was emphasized by the Wesleyan Arnelian doctrine, outward holiness. Uh, there's Quakers associated in this, and then let's read over here. Pentecostalism was born out of the Holy List movement. Charles Fox Parham and William Seymour were both holiness ministers and were seen by their followers as being used by God to restore Pentecost to the church. Pentecostal teaches that the, the believer could, in addition to become sanctified, receive the power of God and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In early Pentecostal thought, in the classic form of Pentecost was influenced by the Wesley Armenian theology. And thus was considered the third work of grace that followed the new birth, first work of grace, and the entire sanctification, the second work of grace. Pentecostals believe in the doctrine of finished work, however, rejects second work of grace to mean entire salvation. So, the Christian perfection is given to Christianity, a process of achieving spiritual maturity and perfection. The ultimate goal of this process is union with God, characterized by pure love of God and other people, as well as personal holiness or sanctification. And in other terms, holy Christian holiness, entire sanctification, perfect love. Um, I am saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. God says, be holy for I am holy. And yet we find in the Bible, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now I'm looking up 1 John here, too. And it says, <clears throat> my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate, the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is our appropriation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And if I can give an account, am I going to be perfect between now and the grave and the rapture? No. Listen, just my thoughts are a sin. The thoughts. Joab's brother thought about murder. Uh, Ahab had no idea his wife had Naboth killed and yet God charged him. Jacob did not know that Rachel stole her father's images and yet he's charged as a husband. I mean, we are to strive for perfection. We are strive for holiness. 
but we're going to sin. We are still in veil in this flesh. And if we confess our sins, and John chapter uh, first John chapter two said, My little children, these things are right to you that you sin not. Okay. And if any man sin. So here's the root of this this hymn. And from the roots is now different Pentecostal is different from from uh Quakers and is different from the churches that I had mentioned. But what are you gonna do? Are we going to erase a Methodist teaching that came out and the Methodists were great? They loved the Lord. But they're not the Methodists today that they were back then. Are we going to glossy over sins as the world does, call it shacking up and affair, where it should be adultery and fornication? And outside of that, we, we got a wonderful hymn here. But the foundation ain't strong. Oh, now I see the crimson wave. Not blue. Not baptism. Though your sins shall be scarlet, they shall be made with white as snow. The fountain, deep and wide, for all to come. There is not one sin that a man can do in this present age called the church age. That cannot be washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's for all males and females, young and old, of all races, of all denominations, of all characters. Jesus, well, let's, there we go. He's got the name Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save. You know, any man that comes to Jesus Christ says, listen, I'm a sinner. I'm guilty. God is not going to pass them up. Salvation is so wonderful and so great of God that the Bible records that angels rejoice when one sinner repents and gets right. I have met with two people in my life who come out and say, God can't save me. In other words, Maybe not specific to those words, but I'm just too much of a sinner. I'm just too vile for God to save me. And that's not true. Mike teases to say, points to his wounded side. Also the nails in his hands. The nails in his feet. And the, the thorn crown on his brow of his head. Not to mention the, the cat of nine tails. For the fact is, Acts 20, 28 says that that blood that purchased the church is God's blood. And yet the Jehovah Witnesses deny Jesus being God. And yet they will say, yes, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that saves. Denying the scriptures that that's God's blood. And it's deep and wide. No one on this side of Calvary to the rapture will be rejected for their sins and their guilt. I see the new creation rise. Well, the Bible calls us a new creature in Christ. Remember I said this, this holiness movement where the second grace and the third grace and yeah, the Bible calls us a new creature. What's the new creature? I'm no more born to go to hell. I am no more my have my father the devil. I, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and I'm going to heaven by the reservations of Jesus Christ. I am now a child of God. I now have the Holy Spirit that dwells with me that never did before my salvation, and I have the power of the Word of God to have understanding what God says for my life and 
what I'm supposed to sh listen. I know things right now that I never knew. Any lost man knows what I should be doing, what I should not be doing. And by studying and reading the word of God when I have failed, I know that I must confess. And yet God says, if I confess. It's a must to get a reward. It's a must to hear well done, but yet it's still conditional. You can be a saved Christian and live your live your life worldly and in sin and just abomination of, of the worldliness and of the devil. And if you are a child of God, you're not going to lose that adoption. Called a new creature, new birth. I hear the, the speaking blood. It speaks. Polluted nature dies. The wages of sin is death. Sin causes death. And the wages of sin is death. Is written to Christians. The world dies because of sin. And so does the Christian. So if you're going to come out and say, oh, I can obtain perfection. And I've met one guy in my life who, has, who says he's saved and he's never sinned. And I told that man, tell me where they bury your dead body and I will stand on your grave and proclaim you a sinner. Oh, no, no. The wages of sin is death. Written to Christians, we will die because, I mean, outside the rapture, which can happen any moment. I've got Christian friends and family who have died. Some in the world and some who love the Lord. And they died because they're a sinner. Now, if you're going to reach out to this holy movement that, you know, second grace and you, you can achieve perfectism. And we all know the study of the Quakers and how how timid and how protected they are and how they shun the world. And in death, we know you died because you're a sinner. God will never die because God never sinned. He says, be holy for I am holy. And if we die, uh, we have sin. We are made sinners. I mean, our residence changes from, from hell to heaven. Our family changes from the devil to God. Can we achieve? We're to strive. Polluted nature dies. Wages of sin is death. Sinks neath the cleansing flood. What causes sin? When we defile God. When we go contrary what God said. When we do what God tells us not to do. And when we don't do what God tells us to do. Wages of sin is death. And it says sinks neath the cleansing flood. Come now, let us reason again. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made as white as snow. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All sin is able by our confession, by our guiltiness, by us seeking a pardon through God alone, we may clean. I could right now it's not going to happen. But if I could, I could right now, if, if God would have put in front of me paper and saying, this is all the sins that are not under the blood right now. And if I were with an honest heart, with a heart trying to seek God and trying to, to attain the perfectness of God, if I were to confess every one of those sins dearly, and achieve the holiness of God and be right with God. And I get up and get in my car and somebody cuts me off and I get angry. And the Bible says, be angry. 
and sin not. When I don't help another person that is an enemy of mine, and Jesus says, help your enemies. For whatever chance of the worldly things, I don't study the Bible today. Because I've been distracted by the world. But Jesus said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after his heart has already committed adultery with her. If my eyes slip off in the lust of flesh, and the lust of the eyes, I've sinned. Are you trying to tell me that you can reach the ultimate perfection when the first commandment is God first all the time? Are you telling me when your bladder wakes you up at 4 o'clock in the morning after you're having a good dream and you're a good sound sleep and that bladder said, hey, you got to get up and go to the bathroom. Are you telling me your first thought Oh, holiness to God, praise the Lord, I got to go pee. Really? Are you telling me you're about to cross a road and you didn't look and it just you, you stepped out accident and here comes a car coming, it's about to hit you and the first thing you're going to think about is God. Really? That's perfection. That's the life of Jesus Christ that we ought to live. But I don't. But I got to confess my sins. All my sins I confess is under the blood. All my sins I am guilty for are under the blood when I confess them. Now, there are times I may confess a sin haphazardly. That's not washed. I get caught in one of them sins that I like to do. And, oh, Lord God, forgive me because I was caught. Oh, God, I'm so sorry I was caught. You know, the worldly sorrow. The Bible. I ain't washed. I ain't cleansed. When I'm at agony with myself, when I got pure tears of, of, of knowing that I have sinned against a holy and righteous God. And it bothers me. Okay, at that point. You know, there's a lot of sins that we enjoy, the secret sin that we do. We confess them. I think sometimes they're not confessed. <laughs> and them sins of mine, you know, I do the confession <laughs> half-heartedly. And there are times I just really, Lord God, I am sorry. Lord God, I am sick of it. Lord God, will you help me next time? Lord, I need your help the next time this comes up. Lord, please. And then when it comes up, Lord, I give God the glory. I rise to walk in heaven's own light above the world in sin. All right, this is where we get into, we're reaching ultimate perfection. I mean, are you trying to tell me, we'll look at, we'll look at the Quakers. I mean, we, we've seen Quakers. We, we've heard about the Quakers. Are you trying to tell me you really think by your beard, no mustache, wearing black, and, and talking the, 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 the old English and right around a buggy that you are above the world in sin? Because when you go into town, they, they ridicule you, they mock you, and they, and, they, and you sit there and take it, and they, they may take a pie and throw it in your face, and you, you know, you just snub it off, and you sell your quilt. That makes you above sin. You've never sinned. You don't need 1 John 1, 9. I mean, it, it, your perfection. And your life is going to defile that the wages of sin is death. I can rise above the world in sin when I am Christ. That is my standing. I have victory over death and hell. And I have victory over the devil and the, and the earth. And I have victory over the world and sin when I'm standing and I am in Christ. My state is another condition. 
as there are 50 states in the United States, I don't know how many states I have. I mean, I've got a state of confusion. I've got a state as I want to read and study my Bible. I've got a state of imperfection. I've got a state where I want to pray for my brethren. I'm in the state where I forget to pray for my brethren. I'm in a state of impatience. I'm in a state of patience. I'm in a state where I get angry and I don't sin. I'm in a state where I get angry and I sin. I'm in a, I'm in a, a, a state where I get aggravated. I'm in a state where I, you know, there, many states. I could be in a state of good sarcasm, and I could be in a state of bad sarcasm. I've heard people say that sarcasm is a sin. No, you can use it correctly. You'll find sarcasm in the Bible. When I can rise above the world in sin, that is my standing in Christ. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin, and if any man sin, that's the state of 50, if not more, in our life. It comes down to our states are, are in four points. We either do good, one state. We do evil, the second state. We are in righteousness, the third state. Or we are in unrighteousness, the fourth state. And everything from there. You know, you could read your Bible. Okay, I read my Bible for today. Oh, I read my Bible through the, through a year, and you don't know nothing. You didn't learn nothing. You didn't get nothing. You can go through a state of praying to God, and God says, I ain't listening to that prayer. That's a vain repetition, man. I, I, I told you not to do that, God, through Jesus. And then you could be in the state... It, it, you find a homeless person, you don't usually really give them money, but it's been burdened on your heart. You think for the Lord, you're going to give something, maybe conditionally or whatever, how you do it. And you're giving it for the Lord. And another state is you could be giving something to somebody because somebody's watching you. And you're going to blow that trumpet. Hey, look how good I am. I think a lot of these holiness people, they do what they do so people can look at them and say, look how holy I am. And Jesus read about that or told us about that when we read the Bible. You know, they, they wear these long gowns and they're these philatelaries and, and they, they love the greetings in the high place and they put their, their shirt on backwards. So people can look at you and say, oh, look at that guy, the religious guy. Look at him. And that's an unrighteous state because you want man to look at you. Listen, there are people in the churches today that people have a least esteem. Uh, you know, they probably don't even know. And they're going to find out when we get the glory, when we get the judgment seat of Christ. That person, least, that person was praying for everybody. That person spent time in prayer, which you don't think is important. That person in their church, you're the one that got by. Hey, even myself, I say, you know, things are going well in my life because, because you know, we're praying to God. It may not be me that's doing the prayer that God's listening to. Listen, if I was in a holy and righteous state of complete perfectness and God is listening to my prayer, we'd be raptured out of here by now. And if I had the signs and the, and the, and the tongues of the Pentecostal movement, there's a guy who has... DJ equipment, there would be fire down from heaven upon his equipment, but not him. Some of you know what I'm talking about. I ain't got that power. And I ought not be praying about that stuff. And listen, I want the guy saved. I pray for the guy. He was missing for a couple of weeks. I was praying for his soul. I was praying in this case he was sick. I should not be even praying about that with his, his, his tools and his instruments. That's wrong. Even for the perfection of the gospel of freedom. Those thoughts are wrong. I rise to walk in heaven's own light. You're rising? Me, the great eye, the wonder eye of all eyes? 
No, you're not going to rise and walk. You're going to get up and walk in the in the in the standing of Christ and Christ alone. Not you. I rise and walk in heaven's own light above the world. I no, you don't. In Christ, we do. With heart pure. And Jesus said, out of the heart is adulteries, if you think upon a woman lost out, uh, murderers, if you think about killing your boss, think about doing harm to that guy who cut you off, that guy that got that job promotion that you did not get. Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitful and wicked above all things. Who can know it? Are you telling me you have reached a heart that's pure? Jesus and Jeremiah has told us and Paul tells us that that heart is wicked and the source of our sins. It ain't our head. You don't go to a shrink or to a head doctor. You got to go to the Bible and Jesus Christ, the word of God through almighty God to get that heart right when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us. Or you can have a reformation in your life and you can clean out your heart and you can clean everything out of there. The Bible says that Jesus is. And you can have the great holiness and the 14th revival of your heart get things all straight. And Jesus said that evil spirit will come in and get seven more vile evil spirits and you're worse than the end. You're worse than the beginning, excuse me. Self-reformation, self I will write. That ain't going to save you and that ain't going to get you a positive light. I'm going to stand to judge and see the Christ and if there's gold, silver, precious stone. How'd you get that gold, silver? By Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Because I would have not known anything without the word. And garments white. All right, we shall get garments. It's the righteousness of the saints. Okay, how did we get the righteousness? He was he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God might be in us through him. How's that? It ain't me. It ain't me at all. Those garments there, I'm looking for something right here. Oh, that just made a mess. Forgive me. Oh, there it is. Let me, let me. No, oh, I had it. Oh, well. Sorry about that. Sorry about that interruption. He was made sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus Christ is the holy and righteous one of all, God the Father. All right? That the righteousness of God may be in us. Through him. Garments white. Fine linens of righteousness of the saints through God. Who has cleaned us that we have righteousness? Jesus Christ. Not me. Christ enthroned within. There are many people out there that, put, that take God and Jesus off the throne. They put themselves up there. That, 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 uh... The uh, public, no, the, the Pharisee. Oh, God, look how great I am. Look how wonderful I am, Lord God. I'm not as this guy over here. I'm not a heathen. I'm not, 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 not. You, God said, Pfft. I said, Jesus said, I said, God said, Pfft. and that man came up, they wouldn't even lift his head and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Jesus said, that man, that man. You know what, the, you know what holiness people do? They, they look what I've done. Look what I do. Look, look what I. So, amazing grace. Amazing grace. Yeah, it comes from God. It's amazing why God would take his life, why God would suffer himself, why God would leave the heavenly throne and come down to the sin-cursed world. Why he would suffer and die, that I may have eternal life. Amazing grace. This heaven below... To feel the blood apply. I'll, I'll take with that verse. I remember that Saturday afternoon I got saved on April 21st, 1987. And it was sometime after that, I think I was going home or I was home already. So 
Man, it felt like I took a, a shower that I have never taken in my life. It was refreshing. It was, oh, I am so clean. I wasn't even in the shower. And then I had, there was a time after that, after, recently after I got, I was in the shower, taking a shower. I was like, you know, and I don't, wouldn't know then, but I, today, it's like I'm washing a brand new body, and I was. I wasn't washing a child of the devil anymore. I was washing a child of God. And there is one time I do believe in our life that we have the sinless perfection. Let me tell you. I don't know. April 21st, 1987. When I knelt down at my grandma's coffee table and I asked Jesus Christ to save my soul and I felt and I knew I was saved at that moment. If the rapture would happen at that point, I would have no sin. It was all watch, wasn't it? But I also would have had no rewards. At the moment you got saved, all your sins are gone and cleansed. But if you were been raptured or die, you would get no rewards because you haven't done anything yet. But you still die. Let's say a guy gets saved. Let's, say, let's make it harsh. All right, he's going to get a martyr's crown. He has, he has been turned into a religion, and they say, denounce your faith in Christ, and we'll keep you alive. He says, nope. Whatever your God is, it's the false God, and God, Jehovah, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jesus Christ of the gospel and of the Bible is my Lord God and Savior. And, say, and, he, and the neck gets popped off with a sword, and death happens. That man died for the word of God. That man died for Jesus Christ. Now he's going to get a martyr's crown. Was he in sinless perfection? No, because he died. Now what would happen if that man got saved at that moment? He's right there. He's at the guillotine. He's there for a crime. And a guy's witnessing to him. He says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you get saved. And that moment when that blade comes down and he says, Lord God, and truly means this, I need a pardon. I need to be saved. I need to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, boom, he loses his neck. He's saved. He's been cleansed. And probably at that point, he might be in sinless perfection. Because all his sins have been washed, but he might have had that la one last thought before that blade came down and killed him. All right, let's say he died and all his sins were confessed. He still died. The wages of sin is death. Listen, our perfection is when we get to New Jerusalem. My perfection is the state, not that I am, but the standing in Jesus Christ. I am saved, I am sanctified, I am cleansed, I am washed, I have been regenerated. I have the new birth by God through Jesus Christ who is God. What do I do? What, my, what state am I in? Any state, whether good or bad. But it's not I. And only Jesus, and Jesus, and only Jesus, all right, to mention Jesus, my Jesus crucified. Look at it, many Jesus. I don't mean many Paul says being warm. I mean the word Jesus, and that don't usually show up in him. It says, feel the blood apply and Jesus. Only Jesus, no. My Jesus crucified. Amazing grace. Exhalation. Tis heaven below to feel the blood applied, comma, and Jesus, comma, and only Jesus, no, comma, my Jesus crucified. Amazing grace to heaven below to feel the blood applied and Jesus. Now, maybe that's a syntax and there that. 
Jehovah Witnesses have a problem, but only Jesus know. Well, I know about Amazing Grace. I have received Jesus, Amazing Grace, by receiving Jesus. I know I am saved. I don't have any doubt. And if I had doubt, who cares? God don't have doubt. God's not going to refuse me because I have doubt. Jesus crucified. Also was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. The cleansing stream, I see, I see. I plunge, I plunge, oh, it cleanses me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanses me, it cleanses me, yes, cleanses me. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Salvation today changes our location. Listen, there's a person that in our ministry has cancer. And if I were to witness to that person as I've had, and if that person gets saved, there's no guarantee that cancer will go away. It may get worse. But when we get to New Jerusalem being saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, then there's no more cancers. There's no more sorrow. There's plenty of sorrows now. The Bible says, Yea, that they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And yet there are people out there with a the prosperity gospel, how great and wonderful thing it is if you'd have received an, another Jesus. Any and all sins that a man commits, saved or lost, a man can be worthily clean, not by his work, but by the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And the gospel is not, we can clean ourselves. The gospel is not that we can attain this holiness and righteousness. The gospel is that because we are sinners and Jesus is sinless, he was made sin for us who knew no sin. That we can only obtain righteousness for there is none righteous, no, not one. We can attain the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ alone. And that in the salvation of God the Father and God the Son and the giving of the Holy Spirit, there is no abandonment of God for a child that's been adopted through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we will sin. I hate to say it. We will sin. Do I not try to sin? You better believe it. Do I sin? You better believe it. Am I happy I sin? No. Paul said in round about what? That which I, I'm to do, I don't do. And that which I don't want to do, I do. Paul said he sinned. Paul said he was the chiefest of sinners. One thing we can get out of this hymn is the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins and all unrighteousness. What can we do? We can sin. What can we do? We can die. What can we do? We can believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. What can we do? If we confess our sins. Our stand is in Christ. Perfect perfection. Yes. Glory to God. I am seated in heavenly places today. Right now. I can approach the throne of grace. Right now. My state, good boy, good boy, that's a different story.